بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Today we will talk about our COG guideline, the diagnosis and treatment of malaria in pregnancy. Malaria is a tropical disease with its highest prevalence in the area south of Sahara deserts because the disease spreads almost entirely in the region with tropical and subtropical climates. Malaria is a parasitic infection caused by an obligate parasite called plasmodium which is carried by female anopheles mosquito malaria in pregnancy is detrimental to the woman and her fetus and collective data demonstrate that the risk of adverse effect from untreated malaria in pregnancy outweigh those of treatment and that is the reason which compels us to study this infection in detail so kindly subscribe this channel and press the bell icon now how to differentiate between severe and complicated malaria and an uncomplicated malaria well when we do thick and thin film for the malarial parasite in order to check the uh, plasmodium under microscope and we find out that there are 2% or more of the parasitized red cells under the high field microscopy that indicate that this patient might have got severe and complicated malaria that also depends upon the clinical feature but microscopy showing plasmodium of more than 2% show that this patient has got severe malaria although the parasitism of the severe malaria can be less than 2% as well But what happens in uncomplicated malaria in UK it is defined as fewer than 2% of parasitized red blood cells in the woman with no signs or severity of anemia of malaria it's very important to identify the clinical and laboratory findings of severe and complicated malaria in adults and those findings are first of all prostration impaired consciousness respiratory distress which may include the acidotic breathing acute respiratory distress syndrome pulmonary edema which uh, is not only clinical but also radiological moreover multiple convulsion patient may presents with circulatory collapse shock and the blood pressure of less than 90 by 60 mm of mercury abnormal bleeding and dic jaundice hemoglobinuria now what lab test help us diagnose the severe malaria those are first of all severe anemia means hemoglobin of less than 8 g per deciliter thrombocytopenia hypoglycemia meaning a sugar level of less than 2.2 mmol per liter acidosis means ph of less than 7.3 renal impairment by renal impairment we means that oliguria of less than 0.4 ml per kg body weight per hour or the creatinine level of more than 265 micromol per liter hyperlactatemia which correlates with mortality hyperparasitemia means more than 2% of parasitized red blood cells algid malaria showing gram negative septicemia and lumbar puncture is done to exclude the meningitis that is uh, also a very important point Now why is malaria diagnosis difficult especially in pregnancy uh, it's because there are no specific symptoms or sign uh, of the malaria and malaria infection may presents with just flu like illnesses so a history of travel to a malaria endemic area should be sought in a pregnant woman with pyrexia of unknown origin Now what are the common signs and symptoms of malaria here we are not talking about the severe malaria just the common signs and symptoms which help us in diagnosing malaria those include fever chills sweats headache muscle pain nausea vomiting diarrhea cough general malaise and on clinical examination we find jaundice elevated temperature perspiration pallor splenomegaly and respiratory distress now how should malaria in the pregnancy be diagnosed well we do a specific thick and thin film for microscopic diagnosis of malaria and that allow the species identification and estimation of parasitemia so that appropriate anti malarial can be prescribed 
Okay, so not only it tells us about the number of parasites, but also uh, it tells us which type of parasite is this. So it's very important. Usually in our practice, we do rapid detection test as well, that, but that may miss the low parasitemia, which is more likely in the pregnant woman. And a rapid detection tests are relatively insensitive in Plasmodium vivix malaria. And it's important to note that in febrile patient, three malaria smear 12 to 24 are apart, rule out the diagnosis of malaria. Now, is the severity of malaria a useful aid in managing the infection? Women with malaria in pregnancy should have the severity of their condition assessed and documented as an aid to the management. That is very important. Now, how is malaria infection treated during pregnancy? For that, we should consider this uh, as an important point that treat malaria in pregnancy as an emergency. Admit the uh, pregnant woman with uncomplicated malaria to the hospital. By uncomplicated, we mean that less than 2% of parasite, uh, parasites on the microscopy. And the pregnant woman with a severe and complicated malaria to an intensive care unit. By complicated and severe malaria, we mean not, uh, the patient is not only showing the clinical signs of the severe malaria, but also on microscopy, we find out that there are more than 2% of parasites. And along with the supportive uh, treatment in the form of fluids, uh, antipyretics, antimatics, whatever the patient needs uh, during the hospital stay, we should give appropriate treatment for malaria. And what drugs are recommended? First of all, intravenous artesunate is the treatment of choice for severe uh, falciparum malaria. Use intravenous conine if artesunate uh, is not available. And use conine and clindamycin to treat uncomplicated plasmodium falciparum or mixed such as the plasmodium uh, falciparum and vivix etc. Use chloroquine to treat plasmodium vivix, plasmodium ovale and plasmodium malari. Primaquine should not be used in the pregnancy. Now seek advice from infectious disease specialist. This is an infectious disease specialist, especially for severe and recurrent cases. And do not persist with oral therapy if vomiting is persistent. Now the question arises, how should these drugs be given in the management of severe and complicated malaria? We all should know this point. The answer is artesunate is given as an intravenous injection at the dose of 2.4 milligram per kg at 0, 12 and 24 hour and then daily thereafter. When the patient is well enough to take the oral medication, she can be switched to oral artesunate 2 milligram per kg along with the clindamycin. If artesunate is not available, give conine IV 2 mg per kg loading dose in 5% dextrose over 4 hours and then 10 mg per kg IV over 4 hours every 8 hours plus clindamycin IV 450 mg 8 hours maximum dose of conine is 1.4 gram. When the patient is well enough to take the oral medication, switch to oral conine and oral clindamycin. Now, how to manage an uncomplicated malaria? In order to treat the Plasmodium falciparum malaria, use oral conine 600 mg 8 hourly and oral clindamycin 450 mg 8 hourly for 7 days. But if the patient is complaining of vomiting but no signs of severe or complicated malaria, give conine 10 mg per kg dose IV in 5% dextrose over 4 hours every 8 hours plus IV clintamycin 450 mg every 8 hourly. When the patient is well enough to take the oral medications, she can be switched to oral conine 600 mg 3 times a day to complete 5 to 7 days and oral clindamycin can be uh, used if needed. Now, how to manage the non-falciparum malaria? For that, if on microscopy we find Plasmodium vivix, Plasmodium ovale, Plasmodium malaria, use uh, oral chloroquine 600 mg followed by 300 mg 68 hours later. Then 300 mg on day 2 and again on day 3. 
and for resistant plasmodium vivix as for uncomplicated plasmodium falciparum we give treatment and for preventing relapse during pregnancy uh, we give chloroquine 300 mg weekly until delivery and for preventing uh, relapse after delivery we postpone treatment until three months after delivery and g6pd testing after that and if we suspect the plasmodium ovale then we come to oral primaquine here we have the primaquine 15 mg single dose for 14 days for plasmodium vivix, oral primaquine 30 mg single dose for 14 days. Now, what are the complications of malaria in pregnancy? Those are miscarriage, stillbirth, premature birth, fetal growth restriction, low birth weight, maternal and fetal anemia, fetal heart rate abnormalities during labor, and susceptibility of the infant to malaria. Now, how to do the management of the common obstetric problems with acute symptomatic malaria? In severe malaria complicated by fetal compromise, a multidisciplinary team approach should be adopted, which include the group of doctors like intensive care specialists, infectious disease specialists, obstetricians, and neonatologists. Stillbirth and premature delivery in malaria in pregnancy are best prevented with the prompt and effective anti-malarial treatment. Uncomplicated malaria in pregnancy is not a reason for induction in pregnancy during labor. Pharmacological thromboprophylaxis should be weighted uh, up against the risk of hemorrhage and should be withheld if the platelet count is falling or less than 100 that indicates the thrombocytopenia. Inform the woman of the risk of the vertical uh, transmission and in the presence of positive placental blood films that fever in the infant could indicate malaria, a blood film from the baby is required for confirmation. Now coming to the management of complications of malaria during pregnancy. How to manage the coma or the cerebral mal malaria? In that case, we have to monitor using the Glasgow Coma Scale, maintain the airway, Put the patient to the left side, exclude the treatable causes of the coma like hypoglycemia, bacterial meningitis, etc. Secondly, the patient may present with hyperparexia. In that case, we have to administer the tepid sponging, fanning and antipyretic drugs. How to treat conversions? In that case, we have to maintain airway, treat promptly with the intravenous or rectal diazepam. How to manage the hypoglycemia? Check the blood sugar regularly, correct the hypoglycemia and maintain with a glucose-containing infusion. Severe anemia, transfuse with the packed red cells. Acute pulmonary edema with a JVP of less than 10 cm of water. Treat by propping the patient up with an angle of 45 degree. Give oxygen, give diuretics, stop uh, intravenous fluid, intubate and add positive and expiratory pressure. Now how to manage the renal failure? Exclude the pre-renal causes, check the fluid balance and urinary sodium. If an established uh, renal failure and patient is unstable then go to hemofiltration or hemodialysis and if that is unavailable go to peritoneal dialysis in case of spontaneous bleeding and coagulopathy transfused with the fresh uh, whole blood or cryoprecipitates or fresh frozen plasma in case of metabolic acidosis optimize the fluid balance in case of the shock Take the blood for culture, give parental broad spectrum antimicrobials and correct hemodynamic disturbances. Now, what antenatal care after recovery from an episode of malaria in pregnancy is advised? We have to give the regular antenatal care, including the assessment of maternal uh, blood tests like uh, hemoglobin, platelets, glucose, and we have to do the proper growth scans depending upon the gestational age and as uh, there is a risk of fetal growth restriction in malaria so regular fetal growth assessment is advised and inform the woman about the risk of relapse and try to prevent it by giving a clear protocol to the woman 
Now, what is the risk of vertical transmission of malarial infection to the baby? Vertical transmission to the fetus can occur particularly when there is infection at the time of the birth and the placenta and cord are the blood film positive for malaria. So all the neonates whose mother develop malaria in the pregnancy should be screened for malaria with a standard microscopy of thick and thin film at the birth and weekly blood films uh, for 20 or 28 days. I would like to complete my presentation with this code. To see sunshine in your life, you have to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, latch onto affirmative. Thank you so much. Wish you best of luck. Allah